Welcome to another video. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Mike Hansen. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about a 13 year old boy in Michigan who died three days after getting the Pfizer vaccine. The cause of death is being investigated by the CDC. And according to the patient's aunt on Twitter, the preliminary autopsy report showed that he had fluid around his heart. So what caused his death? Before I tell you my thoughts on that, it first helps to understand what the background on what myocarditis is. It's inflammation of the heart muscle. And pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardial sac. That's where the heart sits in there. Sometimes pericarditis can cause fluid to build up within the sac, but around the heart muscle. And this is called a pericardial effusion. The first reports of myocarditis after COVID-19 mRNA vaccines, that involved US military patients and patients from Israel. The Israeli cohort identified a male predominance with an incidence of one out of every 20,000 men aged 18 to 30. We know that the COVID vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna can cause it, but actual COVID infection is a much more common cause. The CDC has received 1,226 preliminary reports of myocarditis and pericarditis following about 300 million total doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Myocarditis is most common in the ages of 12 to 30, and it's more common in boys. Among people 12 and older, there were 267 reports of heart inflammation, meaning myocarditis, after one dose of vaccine, and 827 after the second dose, and 132 after an unknown dose. So overall, the number of cases of myocarditis related to the COVID mRNA vaccines is very low. And for those who do get it, it's usually a small amount of heart inflammation that lasts for about a week or so, requiring minimal treatment. In fact, not only is myocarditis way more common from COVID, the risks to the heart from infection can be more severe. Take a look at this ultrasound of the heart, AKA an echocardiogram. This is of a young patient with COVID myocarditis. This is a poorly pumping heart. This is why the CDC still recommends vaccination for those 12 and older. Now there's three recent studies that came out that looked at specific cases of myocarditis that developed after getting the COVID mRNA vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna. In the first study, in the journal Pediatrics, they reported on seven cases of myocarditis from the Pfizer vaccine. All the patients were seven otherwise healthy male teenagers. All of them tested negative for COVID. None of the patients met criteria for multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, or MISC. All had an elevated troponin level. Troponin is a protein in heart muscle cells, and whenever there's heart tissue damage, as occurs with either a heart attack or inflammation of the heart, that troponin ends up being leaked into the bloodstream. The higher the troponin, the more heart tissue damage. An echocardiogram, which is great for looking at how the heart is functioning, was normal in all but one patient. Cardiac MRI, which is especially great for looking at detailed structure of the heart, especially when looking for heart inflammation, showed myocarditis in all of the patients. Three patients received nothing more than NSAIDs, meaning non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. This includes things like ibuprofen or the more powerful Tordal, aka Keterlac. These drugs not only help to suppress inflammation or fight inflammation, but they also help to alleviate pain. Four patients received IVIG, meaning intravenous immunoglobulin, and they, they received steroids, and all of them had their symptoms resolved in less than a week. For the one who did have an abnormal echocardiogram, let's take a closer look at his case. So he's a 14-year-old, previously healthy male who gets the Pfizer vaccine. One day later, he develops a temp of 38.3 Celsius, and one day after that, starts getting short of breath, and he has pleuritic chest pain. Pleuritic chest pain meaning it hurts more when he takes a deep breath, or hurts more if you cough or sneeze. So he goes to an urgent care clinic, EKG shows ST segment elevation. ST elevation can mean a lot of different things depending on the clinical context. Sometimes it means there's a heart attack. Sometimes it happens with myocarditis. And then sometimes it happens with pericarditis, especially when you see it in most of the leads. And that's what he had. And his ultrasound showed mildly depressed left and right ventricular systolic function, meaning his left ventricle and his right ventricle weren't pumping quite as strong. Also, he had an elevated troponin eye level of 22.1 NGs per ml, which normal range for that hospital was noted to be less than 0.045 NGs per ml. Now in hospital day three, cardiac MRI showed some areas of heart muscle swelling, meaning edema, as well as some areas of scarring. 
He was treated with NSAIDs, first it was Toradol and later with naproxen. He was also treated with a diuretic called Lasix, aka furosemide. They later repeated the echocardiogram, which showed improvement, and he was discharged from the hospital after four days. On follow-up 13 days later, he appeared well, but he did have chest pain with exertion, despite instructions to avoid strenuous exercise. Now, an EKG showed nonspecific changes at that time, and a third echocardiogram was also done at that time, which was back to normal. So overall, the seven cases of COVID vaccine myocarditis in this study had good outcomes. Then there is this study, which had eight patients that were hospitalized with chest pain within two to four days of receiving either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine. All of them were otherwise healthy males between the ages of 21 and 56, so older age range in this group. All but one patient developed symptoms after their second dose. Most had chest pain within a day or two of the vaccine, and all had elevated troponin levels and myocarditis seen on cardiac MRI. Two of them had slight reduction in their heart function. One of them did undergo a heart biopsy, and the pathology results didn't show any abnormality. All patients had resolution of their chest pain, and they were discharged from the hospital in stable condition. Then there was this study that involved seven patients hospitalized for acute myocarditis-like illness following COVID vaccination. All were men less than 40 years old. Six patients received the mRNA vaccine, either Moderna or Pfizer, and then one received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. All the patients presented within three to seven days after they got the vaccine. They all had acute onset of chest pain, and it was basically more of the same as the other patients that we just talked about. The one patient in this study that did have a heart biopsy done, it didn't show any evidence of myocarditis when they did the pathology study. Now, although the heart biopsy was normal, that doesn't necessarily mean that there wasn't myocarditis present in a different part of the heart because trying to hit that right spot is like throwing darts blindfolded. When doing an autopsy though, this changes because you can look at essentially the entire heart underneath the microscope. And finally, there is this case report. This was a 52-year-old man who developed myocarditis shortly after the Moderna vaccine and was ultimately discharged from the hospital. They had special permission from the patient to test him for just about every marker of the immune system that you could think of, all these different cytokines and chemokines and so forth. They're trying to identify an immunological pattern, but the authors were unable to identify a characteristic profile. So back to the 13-year-old boy in Michigan who died three days after getting the Pfizer vaccine. According to the patient's aunt on Twitter, the preliminary autopsy report showed that he had fluid around his heart. Now, the CDC is investigating this, but there is no official autopsy report. But one of the biggest questions is, what did the pathology show when they looked at the heart underneath the microscope? Did it look normal, or did it show that there was an inflammatory infiltrate like either one of these? Regardless, people, especially males between the ages of 12 and 30 who get the mRNA COVID vaccines, should be aware, especially aware of the possibilities of myocarditis, especially after the second dose, even though it's still very rare. Getting COVID is still far worse compared to the vaccine, including adolescents aged 12 through 15. So right now, Pfizer is the only one approved in this age group between 12 and 15, and studies with the other vaccines in younger children are underway. COVID is less severe in children compared to adults, but the risk of getting MISC following acute COVID infection, plus the risk of severe disease in children who have underlying medical conditions, and the general desire to prevent COVID in children, they're all valid reasons for vaccination of children. Also, because MISC is associated with immune dysregulation that's precipitated by COVID, immune-related side effects following vaccination in children has to be closely monitored. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like it if you liked it. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe and bell notification, and I'll catch you in the next one.